You are looking at a build right here that I was going to build for the new release of Valorant. But then I checked the minimum system requirements and I was shocked. They're recommending a GT730 for like recommended system requirements. And I was gonna put in an RX 470. And I thought to myself, that's way too good for this title if they're recommending a GT730. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scrap this build right here. This will be for a later date. And it was still gonna be, of course, good price performance, but we're gonna be putting together something under $100, which you guys have been requesting. This is a GTX 645, and we're gonna see if we can get some smooth FPS in Valorant. And look at this, recently I just added RGB to my table. And this was in like celebration of this, this new release. Tech yes, citizens, I have negotiated a new 18% off coupon code on a Windows 10 Pro single end user license with today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, for as little as 13 bucks using the coupon and the link in the description below. And with all these parts on the table, this is what we are now looking at. GTX 645. We got this for 27 Aussie dollars in a recent parts hunt. And now the funny thing about this is it's pretty similar in performance to a GTX 650, except it was made for OEM Dell systems and it didn't need a six pin or anything like that, which is going to go perfect with this motherboard and power supply and i5 2400 combo right here. So this power supply is a uh, 200 watt power supply, so very low power. We can't do much with that, but we only paid 15 Aussie dollary dues for this whole uh, combo right here. But the problem is, is it's untested. I don't know what could be wrong with it. So we're gonna fire it up soon and see if it works. But if it does all work out, then we also have a 60 gigabyte SSD and a 500 gigabyte hard drive, which I got in a combo for 20 Aussie dollars. And then last up is the eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, which we got for 25 Aussie dollars. Though this case right here, this was actually free. It is just a dumpstered HP pavilion case, which I got from someone who was uh, selling us a heap of parts and like a lot of them were broken and stuff. So this was just a chuck away. So I mean, hopefully the power switch works. That's really all we've got to get out of it. So this leaves this whole tally now to $87, which in USD terms is 60 USD roughly. So we have come well under that budget. So let's see if we can actually get this thing to boot first. And if we can, then we're gonna clean everything up and see how it performs in Valorant. Guys, we are out here live with heavy winds reporting from the Lenovo Think headquarters. <laughs> but you just need to hook up this thermal sensor and then it should all go away. Yeah, that's much better. Yeah, 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 much better. So the Lenovo Think Center is working fine here on its first boot. It's recognizing the SSD. We've just got a basic two gigabyte RAM stick in here because uh, that's pretty much the simple thing you can do when you're booting up OEMs for the first time is just boot with a single two gigabyte stick because sometimes, and we've recently done this in a previous video where it, these boards can actually suffer from a thing called bit rot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now put in my eight gigabytes of RAM and if that boots fine, then we can start putting that in the build. But if not, then we're gonna have to update the BIOS on this motherboard. So we're now trying to boot this up with the blue memory and it's just not taking, it's not giving us out any signal. So it's kind of just like we thought where this board is really old, pretty dirty. And so I'm gonna just get on with that BIOS update right now. And after a lot of trial and error and troubleshooting, we now have a setup with eight gigabytes of RAM, i5-2400, 
and a GTX 650. It's not a 645, it's a 650. So I'm gonna get some rest now because I'm super tired after doing all this. And I'll come back in the morning and tell you guys how you can get a Lenovo Think Center M81 to work again with, I guess, UEFI boot GPUs. And fear not, Think Center, for you have been outthought. That is the way, uh -huh. I like it. Woken up now, done that exercise, freshened up, and that elliptical rider, by the way, I picked it up like for like a quarter of the price you get it brand new for, and then I cleaned it all up and it's good to go. But this story right here, this is the Lenovo H61 uh, motherboard that is called the M81. Now, these won't work with newer graphics cards to an extent. And so there was a BIOS update that's needed to support newer graphics cards, and that was last released in 2014. So when you update to that BIOS, you'll then gain access to six and seven series cards that will now work, but you don't get the option to disable what's known as secure boot. And you'll need to disable that in order to get the graphics cards or any graphics card to work. If not, you'll have to go through a list. And so that's reliant on Lenovo adding cards like this onto that list. So we're now able to use a GTX 650, but not a GTX 645, since this was an OEM made for Dell. So I'm a little bit disappointed about that because this was $5 cheaper than this. So we're gonna have to take $27 off the budget and then add in 32 Aussie dollars for this. But the biggest thing that I'm concerned about here is this needs a six pin and our budget power supply here doesn't have a six pin. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be adding a $1 connector here and I'm gonna to have to solder that on. And I've also got, since we need two SATA ports still, I'm gonna use a SATA splitter. So another $1 extender on this power supply. So that's $2 extra in our connectors. We've also got $5 extra on the graphics card. Now the last problem that we had with this motherboard was the memory. The two four gigabyte sticks here, they don't work in dual channel. Funny thing is though, they both work on their own and they work on other motherboards in dual channels. So Going through other memory sticks, trying to get dual channel to work, it just simply did not work on this board. So the board is inherently semi-faulty. But I guess the good news and the saving grace is that one of these slots, and only one of these slots, that's the fourth DIMM slot, works okay. So we're gonna put an eight gigabyte stick in instead of two four gigabyte sticks. Now, we're gonna take $25 off the budget, and then we've gotta add $28 to the budget because this one cost an extra $3 when I picked it up in a used deals hunt. So overall, we're adding 10 Aussie dollars to the budget, roughly seven USD. We're still coming well under $100 for this budget build. So let's finally get this thing cleaned up and built.
And now it is time to talk about the under $100 gaming PC. And it is working. It is working absolutely fine. So we're running a stress test right here while we download Valorant. And I've downloaded the latest graphics card drivers which are important for a newly released title like Valorant. And the good thing about the GTX 6 series at the very least is that it still gets uh, new driver updates as opposed to say a 5 series and below. Nvidia stopped supporting those cards quite a while ago. So this should work fine in Valorant. Well, I've got my fingers crossed, but the game's actually pretty quick to download. I'm just running a stress test now to make sure everything's fine, uh, nothing's out of the ordinary, nothing crashes, everything's working 100% before we boot this game up. And I've also done the inspector, taken off those security update things that make my i5-2400 run slower, and we've tuned this PC up. So it is ready to go. And you may notice I've decided to mount the drives in a weird way on the power supply. That's because I was just feeling a little bit different with this build. And the 3.5 inch drive trays are missing. I decided to leave the front panel off, the plastic front panel protector, just mainly because I didn't like the pavilion branding. The HP pavilion, especially second gen, is one of the worst uh, PCs to work with in terms, especially in terms of motherboards and the BIOS updates. There like is no BIOS update. I'm actually grateful that Lenovo did at least give a BIOS update so this GTX 6 series card could work. And with that aside, there's only one thing left to do, and that is boot up Valorant and see how this gaming PC performs. And now here we have it for under a hundred bucks and against all odds, we built ourselves a PC that can run Valorant really smoothly. And this was at 1080p low settings. So as soon as I jumped into the game, I took a look at the settings and basically there is one setting I would change if you're jumping into this on something like this, a low spec machine. That would be the Anisio Tropic filtering. They had it on 1X and I set it up to 16X and everything looked pretty good. And the FPS, this was an even better response here where we're getting over 100 FPS average going around 120 to 130 most of the time while we're playing on this map Ascent. And it seemed to pick this map. I played three full rounds in a row and it seemed to just keep picking this map for me. And it's basically a five versus five mechanism like CSGO. So if you're used to playing CSGO, then Valorant, you'll be able to just jump into this game and start playing it no problems. Now the abilities are a bit different. And so there is some differences between the two games, but overall the feel of the game is pretty much identical. And I dare say that this has better sort of server registry and bullet reg, even though CSGO was really good for that, this feels like it was just that little bit better. So very responsive game and it did run really smooth, even on an i5-2400 and a GTX 650, which we had here today. Though I will say the 1% lows were looking pretty good. They were around 60 to 70 most of the time, but the 0.1% lows did dip. And this especially happened when it was on big events. Like if someone was planning the spike or if it was changing between rounds, I noticed it would sometimes dip to around four or five FPS, but all the other times it was going around 30 to 40.1% low. So, the game ran really smooth, it's just be careful of those big events. It could, especially if you're in a clutch play, for example, it could affect your ability to get that W. But other than that, I mean, we look at how this PC came together and it was just a miracle that it ended up working. I mean, that single stick of RAM seems to work fine for Valorant, though of course I do recommend dual channel. That'll make things run that bit better. Though the GTX 650, that's a perfect card for 1080p low settings on this game. I would say even something like a GT640 would work, but I wouldn't go any lower than a six series card just because of that driver support. And if you're on the AMD side of things, HD 7000 series card or better, I'd say even something like a 7770, that would work fine for this game too. So this thing here will play CSGO, Valorant, and all those other easy to play games like League of Legends, Dota 2, absolutely fine. 
though what about Fortnite? and that's where i've already tested the gtx 650 it's good for around 720p low settings epic distance so this thing will still play Fortnite, it just won't play it at 1080p that well. Anyhow, some other benefits involved with this build. Since we're going with the open air design, if you guys uh, haven't checked out the previous build I did, put the link to that up there, where we just used open air chassis. This is kind of going off the same formula where we paid nothing for the case, and the temperatures were really good. 50 degrees on the CPU, or under 50 most of the time, and same with the GPU, that was under 50, and the noise wasn't that half bad. So the PC itself is running really nicely. And that SSD, this is the like funniest thing, was we put a 60 gigabyte SSD in. I expected the 500 gigabyte backup drive that we used here to be needed, though Valorant was like, I think it was like a four gigabyte download or something like that. It was pretty small game. You could download it within an hour on most internet connections and it just fit completely fine on the SSD to begin with. And with all that out of the way, that leaves us to the best part of today's video and that is Valorant is free to play. So it matches perfectly with a budget potato. So if a lot of your friends are playing this and you just wanna get into it and say you've got a console but you just wanna play on PC, then you can definitely get away with building something super cheap like we've done here today. Though keep in mind, all the problems that we've gone through in today's video, that was, it, it was a bit of a task to get here. And also another thing that I had to do was the, this is a HP case, so the power switch was actually routed a lot different. You didn't get the standard two pin. It came in like this, this uh, 10 pin pack. So I actually had to keep uh, adjusting it until I found the right configuration for the power button to work properly. And that about does it for this Valorant gaming PC right here. If you guys enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know in the comments section below what's your experience with building budget PCs or if you've built a PC for Valorant yourself, what's your thoughts on the game? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And one more thing before we get on to the question of the day, this system didn't juice up a whole lot of power either. It was using around 125 watts from the wall whilst we were playing uh, the game itself. So that was good to see. Not juicing up a whole lot of power, getting some really good FPS. You'd be able to match something like this with a 144 hertz monitor if you could find one of them for cheap then you'd have a really good experience on this game. Though, speaking of the question of the day, it comes from Ken Patchy Strength, and they ask, what's the highest GPU you would pair with an E3-1230? They're speaking of the E3-1230 Xeon. This is a Sandy Bridge part, very similar to the i7-2600, four cores, eight threads. I'd personally pair this maximum with like a 1650 Super RX 470. Something like that will match really nicely with that CPU. You'd be able to play a lot of different titles at 1080p and get smooth FPS. Hopefully that answers that question. And if you guys have stayed this far and you're enjoying that content, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Someone's banging some wood outside now. So I'm gonna get on out of here. Peace out for now. Bye. Oh!